related and then to the earth? Well, the project that I've been working on for the last four and a half years got started when I had a show in Connecticut at the New Britain Museum of American Art. And people from my former school came to see the show and they got the idea that I might do a sculpture for them that would inhabit their new science building at Kingswood Oxford School. You know, this will be cut eventually. I'm a printmaker and painter, uh, and I generally, I have done a lot of things that are pushing out towards three dimensions, but nothing like this, which is really ending up to be a kind of giant mobile or hanging sculpture. There's a great deal of, of printing that had to happen on both sides of the paper um, in order to inhabit the space that goes around in a spiral on both sides. In actuality, the pieces are 12 feet in length, 6 feet in length, and 8. And they each have a theme, um, earth, air, water. And for me, fire, the fourth ancient element, is coming from the sun, which just it suffuses the entire building. Hey, watch your eyes. The piece is really a marriage of primarily paper and steel. The steel forms the armature. It, it ha has been turned, so it forms that um, curving spiral shape, the double helix. What I'm concerned about is measuring how well it bonds and what... So when we were building the, the helix, we were uh, taking our rolled pieces of metal and pulling them into shape. And uh, an important thing with fabrication that we did with this was tack everything into place. So a tack is a very light weld that is just almost temporary and small. And then once everything is into place, you want to tack everything prior so it's all one form. And then you can do a little weld here and a little weld over there and start to anchor this thing down into shape so it has uh, structure and rigidity. When I was researching this project, I wanted to look at a lot of creatures that inhabited these spaces in microscopic forms. So these are forums or foraminiferae that live in the ocean, single-celled structural uh, creatures that um, have wonderful shapes. Then on the earth, I, I looked at a lot of different slime molds, and this one in particular caught my eye. And so I got the idea as I was casting about desperately, really, as an artist, trying to find that unifying motif, that I might look at the matrix made by this amazing slime mold. What's called a slime mold is not really truly mold. It's kind of a complex organism that actually breaks down the soil and is essential for making soil on the earth. And that became the basis or the pattern to make um, this matrix, which I could then print from on the press, and then also use as a model to make um, stencil cutouts that were incorporated into the final piece. In this piece, like many pieces, there were some restrictions that I had to work with. The restriction, of course, was that I'm working with a very narrow and elongated picture plane, basically. And it not only is it not staying flat, so you can look at it, it's curving. So it has to fit on this armature. The image had to convey flow and a glimpse of creatureness in order for you to just see more than overall pattern. I didn't want to do a piece that just had kind of random geometric pattern. That didn't excite me. The words of Rachel Carson, all the life of the planet is interrelated. Each species has its own ties to others and all are related to the earth. For me, it's the poetry of that saying that I wanted to put into the piece. It's the um, beauty, really, of the natural world that I wanted to have in the piece. And
and it's those things working together and the movement and the turning that hopefully will suggest to people the interconnectedness of all beings. It's going to be in a space that is a permanent location for it. Um, a very lovely uh, LEED certified science building on the campus. And it's going to hang in space down from uh, a very high ceiling into the atrium, into this entryway as you come into the building. There's real elegance in actually in the uh, DNA form. You could just hang these with nothing on them, but then it wouldn't be that reflective of me and what I'm doing. I'd like to try new and different things and if anything this project has opened up possibilities for me um, in terms of using um, sculptural elements in my it, with my printmaking or painting in some way that um, enhances both. Well I'm most proud of the fact that I've come back to the school that I started in as a seventh grader and I've brought with me my love of science and my profession as an artist and I've created something that I hope will excite the students and especially the curious ones into exploring the different realms that are found in this piece, the earth, the air, the water, and how everything is related. All the life of the planet is interrelated, as Rachel Carson has said, that we're all in this together, including the creatures that share the planet with us. So I'm excited that um, the DNA structure, which is something I studied as an as a young person in the same school is the basis of the form I used, but that there's color and light and play and fun and uh, interesting relationships between the creatures that dwell in these different realms. <laughs>